Hi friends, welcome back to Dart and Flutter vocabulary series. Today we will be talking about streams uh, in the world of asynchronous programming in Dart. In last video we talked about using futures when uh, we want to access the synchronous event uh, or the long running operations uh, in Dart. So in the, what is a streams? So a stream is actually a sequence of asynchronous events. So if, uh, so they come to you or, or come to the clo uh, consumer who is calling it whenever the next event is ready or available or rather you asking for it. So it doesn't come like as a whole blob, it comes in chunks like a one by one. So in a data sequence, so another, uh, there's another key word, uh, terms that you want to be aware of. Uh, data sequence. So a data sequence is made up of either user generated event or the data read from files. So it's like a sequence of data like when you're reading a file you are not like reading whole file together you are reading like a line by line or chunk by chunk or it's being transferred like in chunks. So that is a data sequence. So in this uh, uh, article I will be showing you how to generate the user generated events as well while we creating the streams. And now the one more thing I want you to be aware of is the keyword is async. So what is async as we saw in our last video, uh, we were using the await keyword in the async functions and these were the functions which, uh, which can use await keywords and it has to be marked as async and that's kind of tell our functions to return a future. And so what, what await does is the function uh, uh, where whenever it sees await, it, it, it suspends at the await, uh, as it hits the await keyword, it suspends the uh, uh, execution right there and wait for it to return before executing the next uh, line in the program. So that was, uh, that was we uh, saw, uh, that's what we explored in the last video. So and uh, in the so first thing is creating stream. So why we are creating stream here is uh, first thing we want to create a stream to understand the other examples in this uh, um, article and also like we want to see like how uh, what stream is and uh, how we can create our own if we need to be if we, we need to. So the first thing is like we are will be creating uh, so streams is actually the delayed um, spaced out events that are supplied to the consumer. So here what we want to do is we want to create a um, something similar, a similar functionality of the two uh, to basically to demonstrate this example like uh, we have to mimic the behavior of a stream. So we will be creating this stream. There are two ways to create this stream. First thing is using the generate and functions and there's another one, one more we will see how to using the iterable, the stream iterable. So what is a generated function? So generated function we'll uh, see um, uh, in another video uh, like in detail but in here I just want to preview on this. So generated function actually help you to produce lazily a sequence of values. So I want to uh, create a stream of five numbers like one, two, three, four, five integers and but I want them to be av available not in at once. I want them to be uh, spaced out like uh, I want them to come delayed not like everything together so to mimic the behavior of a stream or to mimic a stream so that's what I'm doing here in this method and this is I've called generator function so yes there's another keyword you might see async star so that is what is responsible for returning the reference uh, like is so when you see this keyword it's actually it says it's returning a stream so a stream is actually a bunch of the future objects not a one future object if you see just async that means it's returning a one future object and if you see the async star that means it's returning a bunch of um, uh, uh, it is it's returning a bunch of uh, future objects which is a stream uh, and the yield is helping us to send out the spaced out events so now uh, the second method is print stream so we will see more about like listen uh, keyword uh, here uh, sorry listen method so uh, the way we can uh, access the stream is using the listen method so how it, it works is so it takes it like one event by one event and you can process it so we'll see later 
in this article how the more um, things that we can do with listen so in right here so we are just using it to print the events in my uh, this generated stream so that's the function of this print stream is right now so now uh, this is a method create stream using generator so here I'm, I'm basically creating a stream calling this method and just printing it right here and this is my example one create stream uh, using generator so basically it's just printing one through five you can again run the same code uh, it's right here in this here or you can copy the everything to the dart pad as we did in the last video as well and in here i will show you in my android studio how i did that okay so this is my android studio so here i have create uh, stream using generators and I will run it right clicking on the file and it's running one through five and just to show you the code it's right here uh, the what we just discussed here create number stream and you can change you can play around with changing the numbers here as well if you want a bigger stream or such so the next way is to call using the iterable so how the iterable works is uh, this is a stream uh, method in the stream class method from iterable it takes a list uh, of, of the numbers or anything that you would like and it returns a string uh, sorry stream and again it's the same stream as we saw as we created in the last example and you can print it with the same way and it has the same output now retrieving events from a stream so one is the list using lesson what we just saw so in here we what we are doing here is um, uh, we are creating a stream um, I, I, it's a very same stream but I'm just using it the iterable way to create it and then I'm listening to it so I have three ma uh, messages here uh, before and after like before when the stream is starting and when the stream is finished and then I'm printing here whatever the content in the stream is so as you can see uh, the when we use the listen method uh, the listen way um, use this listen callback then you might see all the setup code executes first so what is the setup code is like printing this and this like a finish and end so it doesn't happen like a one by one it happens like okay what you have and once the uh, the events start coming in it will start printing it so that's why you got both messages printed first and then when the stream was ready it will start uh, uh, make uh, splitting the events uh, okay so there's another one another way is the await for so await for how it works is again the stream is very same right here and i am using print uh, again the stream starting and stream ending but the difference here is await for ra rather uh, the listen so it's no more listen it's a await for so as we saw in the last futures the await keyword is actually help to suspend the execution after that so the stream is giving me the event so one it will keep printing it as the events becomes available so first it will say one and then it will wait then the two it will wait and three and so on and once everything is done then it will come here and it will execute this line so that's why you can see the stream starting is the beginning and the stream finished at the end so that's the main difference between the await for and the listen way of accessing and retrieving the events from a stream so whenever you use uh, you need to decide on using listen over await for you may want to keep this condition in mind all right so now the next is processing stream events so here is an example of like um like how, what if i want to take an action of my events so in this case i want to add my events like i want to add all the one through five and want to make it uh, basically printed for example so in this case i have a add event method right here uh, the add event method right here and uh, this is i'm using await for uh, why i'm using await for here because i want to control the the uh, the sequence of these events which are coming so that's why i'm using the add events and i know 
uh, since I'm calculating the whole result and then I'm returning, that's why I'm using the future right here. I'm, I'm not returning a stream, note this point here. I'm not returning a stream, I'm returning a future because I want to calculate the everything, the whole result, and then I want to return asynchronously to my calling function, which is add number in a stream right here. So let's execute this code here. Let's find it. So this is my example number five. So you should be able to figure out uh, the code is right here and uh, right here. So now it's from iterable and is adding the events and it's printing the total. So it this uh, my this code total is returned when my whole add events like uh, total of this is 15 is returned and then it will get printed. So let's uncomment this line in the main function and comment the first one. You can do right click to execute it. Okay, so you saw 15. So that's how you can process the events in a stream, um, the stream events. Now the next is handling errors in a stream. So how this, again, there's are two ways to handle uh, errors in streams as well. One is the await for block and another is the using the listen method. And so for await for, as you see, we can use simply try and catch block as we do in this uh, regular synchronous programming because we know it's coming in an order and we can print it uh, so of course like and I am throwing an exception here at when the number five is um, available it just I just for demonstration purposes only so what happens it will r run through one to four and it will throw an exception at the five and once it's done it will say it's finished because it's the end you can also call this method in finally as well so by the way stream uh, can be treated in these three ways so one thing is like a stream notifies like when first error is there the error events it reports the first events and stops that's what we are doing here so it come across the first events it ran through until the uh, the exception and it reports it and it stops uh, so this is the case we are uh, showing in this uh, article. However, you can also you do the streams which notifies for multiple error events or also you can use it in a way where it notifies the events and also continue delivering events. Uh, okay, so the another way is the listen method. So in listen method, what we do is again, the method is same uh, right here and in the listen you have I'm highlighting this so you have listen first number that the value can print on error and on done so if there's an error it will print right here and when is the last when it's done a stream is finished you will use the uh, uh, you will print or uh, finished so as you can see the result of await for and listen is the same in this case so that's pretty much for this article uh, we saw like few properties of stream in the next article i will show you how or the different types of uh, uh, the streams actually there are two types of streams the single subscription and the broadcast streams and i will show you few examples uh, that we can um, that that's useful uh, dealing with uh, streams so i will see you in the next video